Last time we were left with the problem where we had this box here that we had rotated and scaled and translated with a matrix, okay? But it's at this weird angle now and we had this line box intersection algorithm that would not work because the box was required to be an axis aligned bounding box and our box is no longer axis aligned. The edges that are all these weird angles and so we can't use our previous line box intersection algorithm uh, to intersect with this box and for this video and the next one we're going to look at how to solve that problem and how to how to be able to do an intersection algorithm with this non-axis aligned bounding box so let's let's look at the situation how how did this box get to be like this let's Let's reverse here for, for a moment. And remember that we started with a box that was sitting at the, at the origin, just like this. I'm gonna draw my, my axes. Here's Y and here's X, okay? And then we use this matrix M, M, to convert the box from being at the origin to being in somewhere else and rotated and this this m it did it all it scaled it it rotated it and it translated it to get it where it was and if if you think about it if you think about it now the box has these kind of new coordinate uh axes like this that i'm going to call x-axis prime and y-axis prime that if you if you take the old coordinate axes and run them through the matrix then they turn out just like the box turned out just like this right and that's what m does it's a it's a transformation matrix that changes entire coordinate systems right from from old to new so here we have a new set of axes that represents a completely different coordinate system than the original. And so th this is the concept we're exploring today. Coordinate systems. Okay. And the matrix M that we've been developing transforms vectors from the old coordinate system to the new coordinate system, just like you can see it's transformed this box here, okay? So if you look at the box at the end of the transformation, that's what it looks like in the game, in the global coordinate system of the game. So I'm gonna write that here. This is the global, global coordinate system. And then if you look at the original box, this is like how it would appear if you had built it in like Max or Maya, right? Or Blender, if that's your thing, okay? And you build it at its origin, near its origin, and then when it goes into the game, you have a matrix that puts it where it belongs in your world. And so what we call the original like Max, Maya, Blender axes are the local, local coordinate systems, local for that model, which is in this case, a box. So then M, is a matrix, obviously, that transforms some vector from local coordinates to global coordinates, right? So if I have a, if I have a vector that maybe looks like, I missed, that maybe looks like this, okay? It, it has a certain angle relative to this axis and a certain proportion relative to this box, then my M vector will transform it to the global coordinate system where it will look like basically the same thing. I think it would end up being about there. You see, it has about the same relationship to everything else. It's been transformed from the local to the global coordinate system. Now, getting back to our problem, we can see that our box in the local coordinate system is completely axis aligned. All of the, I mean, my drawing isn't so good, but it should be, these should be completely parallel to each axis, which was our requirement to use the line box intersection algorithm. 
So if we can take this bullet path, this bullet path, and transform it with some matrix back to the local coordinate system, okay, then it might look like this. Let's see, just like we transformed this vector into global and we got a similar vector, I'm gonna try to draw a vector that's about the same. It would look like, it would look something like that, right? It flips the edge of the corner of the box right here and it forms about the same angle with the axes. So we need a matrix that will transform this bullet path vector in the global coordinates, transform that to the bullet path vector in the local coordinates. And so the, the big question is what is that matrix going to be? What do I write here? And as it turns out, the answer to that is that there is a matrix inverse. An inverse matrix that will do this operation. And I'll show you how that works. So if you have m to the negative 1, that represents the inverse matrix. And if you multiply that by m, you get the identity matrix. The identity matrix we covered in a previous video. Here's a link. And the identity matrix is special because if you say i times any matrix m, then you just get m back, right? So we're going to use these two facts to our advantage. In fact, let me write here matrix identity as well. Matrix identity. We're going to use these two facts, okay? And we're going to find out what the inverse matrix uh, is, okay? So let's apply the matrix inverse. I'm going to do a quick, let me just, let me just redraw this. Okay, if you multiply the matrix inverse by both sides of this equation, multiply it here and multiply it here, right? Now, the inverse matrix and the matrix itself, so you have matrix inverse times M, that equals I. So I'm gonna recopy this, I equals, I, I'm sorry, I times the local vector equals the inverse matrix times the global vector, right? And then I times this vector is the same thing as saying I times a matrix, you just get the vector back. So the local vector equals the inverse matrix times the global vector, which is, well, that's what we wanted. Now we have a vector in global space. We multiply it by M inverse and we get back a vector in local space. So now we know what we can put right here. We're gonna put M inverse. So a matrix M will get us from local space to global space. And a matrix M inverse will do the opposite. It will take us from global space to local space. So how did we get, well, well what is M inverse gonna be? We have to figure out what that is, right? We know, we know that M uh, equals TRS, we covered that in the, in the previous videos. So now we have to figure out what M inverse is gonna be. So let's start by multiplying both sides by M inverse, M inverse. So you'll notice here that I put M inverse on the left both times and I did it up here as well. That's because as, as we discussed before, with matrix multiplication, order matters. If I multiply on the left here, then I have to multiply on the left there as well. Otherwise you'll get an incorrect result. So these two M inverse times M cancels out, right? And I'm left here with I equals, let's do this, equals M inverse T R S. So now I have an M inverse in my equation. I'm gonna try and isolate it, get it by itself. So I gotta move all this TRS junk to the other side of the equation. So let's do that first by multiplying by S inverse on both sides, S inverse, okay? And this S times S inverse, 
That's the same thing as, as this up here. An inverse times itself equals the identity. So this cancels out. And this I times S inverse, you just get S inverse equals M inverse times, remember, T is the translation matrix, and R is the rotation matrix. S is the scaling matrix. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Now let's get rid of R by multiplying both sides times R inverse. Okay, so this R and this R inverse cancel out, and you have S inverse R inverse equals M inverse T. And now M inverse is almost alone by itself. We only have one thing left to do, and we're going to multiply times T inverse. T inverse. And the translation matrices cancel out, and then if I swap uh, things on and put them on opposite sides of the equal sign, I'll get M inverse equals S inverse, R inverse, T inverse. So now, if we can just find inverse matrices for scaling, rotation, and translation, we'll be good to go, and we're going to do that in the next video.